So patch 1421 is just around the corner, and it's another huge patch with tons of buffs and nerfs to so many different champions. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at all the changes to come. Just remember that any of these may change before this patch goes live, but for now this is everything we know. Before we get into each role, there's a few system changes to cover, and Lethal Tempo is being buffed for melee users again, bringing its attack speed from 5 to 6% per stack, and bringing the total at max stacks up to 36%. Last time that Lethal Tempo was OP for melee users, we saw the likes of Trindemir, Yasuo, and Yone slapping a little bit too hard, so let's see how this one pans out. Blade of the Ruin King is getting nerfed though, bringing its on-hit damage down for ranged and melee. Sorcerer's Shoes also gets some nerfs, bringing its magic pen down from 15 to 12, as Riot trying encourage mages to explore other options like lucidity boots, although it does feel like the need to buff those boots instead of nerfing sorcerer's shoes. Champion bounties are also getting a system overhaul this patch, making minion and monster gold directly contribute to those bounties instead of comparing to the average farm of the enemy team. Kill bounties are based on gold earned from kills and assists minus the gold given away from deaths. So basically, if you kill your enemy laner 10 times in a row, you won't have as big of a bounty as if you were on a killing spree across multiple different enemies. Now let's have a look at each role and see which champions are affected. Starting with the top lane as always and for the buffs, Gangplank is getting his mana regen increased and his E's barrel recharge buff too. Aurelius Q's mana cost, cooldown damage and minion damage bonus are all being buffed, which seems like some pretty positive changes for her. Kale has felt pretty poor to play since Split 3 kicked off, so she's having her W's mana cost brought down, but it definitely feels like she's going to need more than this one to make a comeback. Malphite's having his base HP increase from 644 to 665, and Teemo's W's passive and active movement speed gets increased. For nerfs, Camille finally gets hit after being S tier for such a long time, and they're nerfing her base health, her W's damage, E's damage, and ultimate's on hit damage too. Gwen's having her passive damage nerfed, which is a pretty huge deal because this affects all of her abilities. Nasus's passive life still gets hit too, along with his Q's base damage. Volibear's W's cooldown is now lower, which isn't exactly going to reduce the incentive to play around his Navori Flickerblade setup, and might just harm the tankier build even more. Yone's nerf is hitting his W's damage with a tiny nerf to its max HP damage, and to be honest this doesn't really sound like too much of a nerf whatsoever, especially when you factor in that lethal tempo is getting buffed. Finally, Yorick's passive damage is also being nerfed too. Over to the jungle next then, and we've just got a bunch of nerfs hit. Brand gets his mana regen reduced, his Q's mana cost increased, and his passive detonation damage nerfed too. Pretty big nerfs all round here. Elise has had one patch in the S tier, but she's being nerfed already, bringing down her base armor and her armor growth. Fiddlesticks' percentage health damage also comes down, Carthus's AP ratio on his ultimate gets hit from 75 down to 70%, and Viego's armor growth also gets reduced too. Into the mid lane, and the main thing we've got to talk about here is the Swain mini rework. Now this has a bunch of changes, making the return of his E so much quicker now, and also moving all of its damage into the explosion. His ultimate's active can now be cast multiple times as long as your R1 is ongoing, and the cooldown now starts on cast instead of at the end. His Q's max range damage is increased and the minimum range has been decreased, and overall his AP ratios have gone up for his Q, W and E, and down for his ultimate. It's going to be really interesting to see where Swain gets played, in top, mid or back in the bot lane. So leave us a comment below on where you're going to play him. Don't forget, if you do want to stay up to date with Swain's best builds and runes as this patch plays out, then head to our website by clicking the first link in the description. So for buffs, Azir is getting his HP regen and base AD increased. Corky is in the patch notes once again with more passive damage, W damage and ultimate damage. Kiana gets some buffs to her HP regen and W's damage too, and Talon gets a buff to his W's return damage as well. For nerfs, Aurelian Soul's base HP comes down along with his E's AP ratio, Galio's mana comes down from 500 to 410, with Riot trying to make him more of a tanky AP bruiser rather than a burst assassin. Wei's QQ's AP ratio is being nerfed along with his E's cooldown, and finally Cassadin also gets nerfed in patch 1421, with 10% less AP ratio on his Q and 5% off his E. Into the bot lane next then, and first up Neela gets some buffs after being nerfed in the hotfix last week. They're making her EQ damage projectile instant instead of a missile, and the Q auto remains empowered even if it does time out mid-swing. Her ultimate's attack lockout also comes down marginally too. Zaya's W's bonus damage goes up slightly too, and for nerfs we've just got Kaiser, whose passive damage comes down. As for supports, we've only got two champions being nerfed here, with Senna getting her armor reduced and Tarek getting his W's bonus armor reduced too. And that covers all of the changes we know so far for patch 1421. Some pretty tiny changes to some champions and some pretty huge ones to others. Remember, as we said earlier, some of these may change before the patch goes live. And stay tuned for our tier list video to see our predictions of what we think the meta will look like when this patch goes live.
Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.